the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Landon McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. You can also listen to him on the Best Coast Boys podcast. Landon, what's going on, sir? Uh, not much. I, I, I'm really excited to be here. I, I, I was just a little bit upset that this is a family show and that I can't uh, change my name to Johnny F around. Uh, because uh, <laughs> What about High School I, Harry? High School Harry is a pretty good one, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, either one of those two names would work for me as, as an alias, I think. Yeah, so we're going to talk about Hard Knocks today, episode one. Uh, Liam, we're going to talk about our biggest takeaways. I- I'll go <laughs> first. Um, the fact that Jerry Jones is a sausage McGriddle guy, it makes him even more lovable in my book. But the fact he that he put salt, salt on it, it the fact that he put salt, salt on it is, is just, that's like crazy person behavior. So I, I'm kind of out on Jerry Jones now. <laughs> how is he still alive? How is he still alive? Well, He's putting salt. Oh did gosh, you notice yeah. he did drink his coffee black, which... Like a real man. Does. Um, I mean, again, it's every single old person that you you see interviewed that's like 105, <laughs> and they always interview them, and they're like, what's your secret to success? And they're like, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, obviously. <laughs> and it's like, maybe they got something there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let, let's be somewhat serious. Well, let's yeah. – first of all, your favorite moment from Hard Knocks because there was a lot of them. Man, uh, seriously. I, I know we've seen, the, we've seen it a lot in the preview, but – Honestly, just watching Dak and Zeke interact is just so fun. It's just it hilarious. They, yeah. they they genuinely like each other, and uh, it's just you know Zeke is just. There's a, a real friendship. Goofball. You can yeah tell. Uh, yeah, and it's and it's it's it, it harkens back to just kind of the old Witten and uh, Romo interactions mm. as well. So mm. uh, yeah, it's you know that's that's kind of my favorite part. I mean, really, there's a lot of really interesting things, but that but that's the kind of stuff that's like fun and seeing the guys interact on the field yeah. and like oh, joke yeah. around. I mean, that's just the best, right? Like, it's awesome. <laughs> For me, it was the uh, the Bones fossil vasectomy. Oh my like, God. That, like that got like a belly laugh from me. Like that might yeah. have been my favorite hard knocks moment ever. <laughs> the amount, of, excuse the expression, but the amount of balls talk that was on this episode was. Uh, Don't I mean, kick us I, off I YouTube, really, please. Really oh, well, I'm talking about footballs, guys. Yeah, okay, so, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was was really over the top, to be honest. Uh, but it was, I mean, seriously, yeah. But I mean. Really, they named him Bones for a reason, I, I assume, and uh, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna stop making jokes. But it, seriously, it was it, it, the the interaction, like the 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 behind the scenes stuff, especially you know I, I haven't say and, and I and I brought this up before going to camp and then seeing like like some of the interactions like behind the scenes afterwards, like that's kind of really cool too, you know, yeah. just like to see. And honestly, and maybe this can lead into the next part of our conversation is, uh, you know, seeing the way that the whole Dak you know, injury or situation kind of went down in the timeline mm-hmm. of, of how it went down to practice was just kind of a fascinating way of, of, I guess how the sausage gets made for, for yeah. like, you know, the, how the trainers interact with the coaches and that sort of thing. So we're going to talk about the deck part next, but before we do that, were you looking for yourself on hard knocks? I mean, I know you were right. Yes, of course. I mean, you know, <laughs> when they were doing crowd shots, I was just like, I was trying to remember what I was wearing that day. I mean, I knew it kind of where uh, I was sitting. So I was looking, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the deck injury, right? Like they show the very first clip was off his ankle, right? The the ankle injury that he suffered against the giants that kind of explained his emotions going through that. And we knew that was coming. Like that was yeah. pretty easy for hard knocks to do that. I'm actually surprised we got as much detail as we did about the shoulder lat injury, right? Like we got to hear Mike McCarthy's initial reactions. We got to hear Dak kind of talk about it. We got to hear the Jerry Jones call to the Texas Rangers. Um, After seeing all that, what are your, just your general thoughts on the overall injury for Dak? Are you concerned? Because the, the, the vibe that I got watching that was they were concerned at first. It was something bigger. They didn't seem concerned during the meetings and everything after. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like, you know, and listen, I mean, of course, right. Like after having gone through last year, of course their initial reaction is, 
here we go again. Here we go right? again. Yep. Like, you know, like, and so uh, you could just see McCarthy kind of sweating. And honestly, watching it was just, was, uh, you know, yeah. But, yep. but, but I, I, I think you know, knowing what we know now on the other side of it and, and knowing just how, how hard knocks works and yeah, how yeah. they create intrigue and, and that sort of thing. I mean, it's a reality show at, at, at the ultimate end of the day. So we, you know, we kind of understand how, uh, it, it creates uh, people to come back from the view, viewing angle of it. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there certainly was a lot of drama, you know, in that added in there, but I think it was, yeah, it, it was kind of, you had to pull yourself back and go, Oh wait, yeah, this is the reality of where we are. And I'm going to kind of trust where we are with that. And, 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 and not to kind of buy into like the dramatic music and like, well, I, you know, I, I think, the- I think if hard knocks thought it was more serious, they probably would have, that's you know, a good point. You no, know, they would have talked about it even more. Like they would have been just yeah. following Dak the next day after the stuff. But it was like, yeah. I don't know. It was a, it nice, was a thing it was a he nice, missed a couple practices. It's a nice in episode storyline. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I mean, yeah. I'm sure they'll it'll. Kind He's of already. We, listen, bit. we saw him. I don't, we didn't get to talk about this on our Tuesday show, but <laughs> yeah, we saw him throwing footballs to Amari Cooper. I mean, a couple of them are just light, soft passes. A couple of them had a little bit of speed on it. So we are what 28 days away from Week One. I don't think any of us should be concerned about whether Dak's going to be ready, right? No, no. But again, it's it's you know it's you it's a nice little story. Into, that's how cinema gets you, right? It really can, it makes you forget about reality for a second, and then uh, you get worried. But yeah, it, it's a nice little storyline. But I, I don't obviously expect it to be a, a season long storyline. If, if I agree. What we're calling this. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you guys about Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing. And you can track all of the action on Bet Online before the next pitch. Head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device and sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, your online sports book experts. All right, Lane, and we have to talk about Micah Parsons, who is really, I kind of think, the star of the show, right? Hmm. Uh, for many, many different reasons, making plays in practice, making play- plays in the Hall of Fame game. My favorite part of Micah Parsons, though, in the entire episode was when he was on the phone with Dan Quinn. First of all, he looked so confused that there was phones on the sidelines. Uh, and then basically pleading with Dan Quinn to play more snaps. I it just kind of shows you his mentality. But uh, what what was your takeaways from seeing, hearing Mark, Michael Parsons for the first time? He's funny, man. Like I mean, he is he's funny. kind of an animal. Uh, you know, it's funny because that was another thing that kind of stood out about the episode overall. Honestly, was the snap politics of of in practice, like how in, and how Dak was so upset that he wasn't getting any of these snaps, mm-hmm. and he was you know calling people out. But um, <clears throat> yeah, Micah just uh, clearly a. a a kid in the candy store playing football. I mean, he was just clearly excited to be back out there and playing football. Obviously, you know, they, they kind of – I don't even know that they actually hinted on it, but but I mean, he hadn't played in a game in, you know, a 19 year months, and a half I think it was. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it was – he clearly was chomping at the bit to get pads on. He was clearly chomping at the bit to play, play a game. And so uh, it was fun to watch him kind of get to go through that excitement and, and – Bounce it around and try to headbutt folks and and uh, you know just kind of get ready for the game. Uh, it's you know it's it's great because we watch him out there and he's doing a lot of different things and he's kind of funny in practice a little bit. But to see you know him in the and hear him on the field, uh, you know he's just a little ball of energy, man. It's just like he's just he's just an energizer bunny. It's well, incredible. it was funny watching him talk to Leighton Van Der Esch and like the difference yeah. between the Leighton's a very still a young player, right? But like yeah. They it seems like an old vet, you know, in that yeah. conversation. He's like, like hey, you gotta ask listen, you to play for more. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to make every play when you're out there. And yeah. Mike is kind of complaining about, you know, having to sit for the next nine hours. And Leighton Van Der Esch looks like he could fall, you know, take a nap right in that seat. So it's just kind of funny the way that he interacts. I think he's going to be – I think the Cowboys defense needed a personality like this, somebody who yeah. is just kind of like, like a kid that just wants to be out there trying to run around making every play. Uh, I, I thought he was one of the bigger stars of the show. A- anybody else you want to mention that you thought came off as really personable or that you liked in this episode? Real quick about Leighton Vanderesh, though, that when he responded, like the, my favorite part was like, man, we're just going to be sitting around for like nine hours straight. And Leighton goes, it's called the preseason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
thought it's it was so like, good. So it's good. It's so true. Uh, I thought, you know, CD Lamb, we, we only got a taste, right? And I'm sure we're he's coming. I'm sure he's going to have a whole episode, if not more, uh, coming in one of these five. But, you know, just to kind of see him inter- interact a little bit more, it, it just seems like, you know, some of these guys, uh, we, we, and you've seen this with, before with other uh, hard knocks, some of these guys like have a level of personality that they present to like the media when they're in interviews. And, and then there's like another layer that they'll show you in these environments where they kind of just, they know they're on camera, but of course, but they, but they, you know, it's like, they forget a little bit. They're a little, well, more I think Zeke's element. like that, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah for Zeke's is like definitely like that where it, it's like, they're a little more in their element. So they're a little more comfortable to kind of be themselves. And it's good to see that with Zeke. Who's just, I mean, hilarious. Uh, and then CD, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, just uh, bagging on on Eleven for not having enough swag and like <laughs> needing to get his cleats changed out and everything. I thought that was just, I mean, because you know, CD could not be more swagged out, and and, and it's just hilarious yeah. to see yeah. him bagging on Parsons about that. Uh, going back to Zeke really quickly, they made a big point to <laughs> show that he was in shape and he's slimmer. I mean. He does look noticeably slimmer than he did, I think, at any point last year. I mean, I'm sure you noticed that when you were out of camp, uh, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, this, but it's funny that they showed kind of what we talked about, right? Like, he always wears sweatshirts. Yeah. And then and yeah. they talked about that, that he always wears like hooded. So, so it's hard to tell sometimes. But yeah, I mean, he definitely is noticeably. Uh, uh, you know, not even just like thinner, but like you notice in the he's he's quicker, he's faster than he was. Like he's hitting, the, he's getting the corner yep. a lot more. Um, he's you know a little more slashy. He's just like a little more explosive on his cuts. It's 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 made a notable noticeable difference in his game. I, I, I'm interested to see if there's a you know a negative effect on the other side. Is he is he a little bit less uh, like a little bit more likely to take mm-hmm. a loss? You know, a I little agree. bit less likely to like you know run into a brick wall and stop and. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, another winner. I don't know if you can have winners and hard knocks <laughs> yeah. or not, but uh, Dan or Quinn. Label them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Dan Quinn. I mean, just the intensity. Like it's it's pretty clear too. Like he's probably the right guy to coach Micah Parsons because he's got this he's got this level of intensity that you can see, and he's always fired up. But also, he's a teacher kind of at heart, right? Like his first call to to Micah Parsons down from the box was, "Okay, hey." What could you be doing better in your stance? What did you see out there? I, I I was already kind of buying into Dan Quinn being at least an average or an above average defensive coordinator, but at least seeing him in this environment, I I just feel so much better about Dan Quinn. So uh, any thoughts on him? No, I agree. I mean, it's anytime, honestly, every time I see Dan Quinn or, or whether it's interviews or in this situation, mm-hmm. I'm impressed. I, I just think he's, he gets it. He's, clearly in touch with his players in a way that a lot of other defensive coordinators aren't and a lot of other coaches aren't. So uh, that that's always awesome to watch. And, and that's kind of, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that, frankly. I agree. I, I think he's going to be one of the bigger stars of this show. I, I think, I think he's going to win over a lot of people uh, over the next couple episodes. Uh, let's take one more quick break. So I can tell you guys about built bar, the absolute best tasting protein bar, bar out there. It's hard to even explain it. Real chocolate, amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar with no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste absolutely fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you will get your next box 15% off. Um, All right, Landon, I want to talk about some guys that we didn't see in this episode Mm. or hear from Demarcus Lawrence. Mm. I thought he would be maybe have a bigger role. Only a little bit of Randy Gregory. We know Gregory's got a big personality, and uh, he's he's a lot of fun. He's just a hilarious person. No Michael Gallup, no Amari Cooper. Do we think we'll see some of those guys in the next couple episodes? I mean, yeah, like there's five episodes, and they just have an embarrassment of riches of personality. No Jalen, like, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of Jalen, but but not very much. So I, I definitely think that we're gonna get uh, a little bit of a run around you know per episode with mm-hmm. some of these guys i'm sure they'll constantly check back in with dak and zeke and follow the storylines of the team but you know there's a lot of really big personalities in this team and i'm sure they're going to get to them but i also think that you know they can't hit them all every episode so I they'll agree. probably divide them into chunks and then distribute them through the my the guess episodes. is we'll see we'll see demarcus lawrence and amari next week after both those guys came off the pup like that's probably an easy storyline for them right 
yeah, especially since they kind of parallel each other. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, for Amari Cooper. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. Know, I can just I can already see it. Yeah. Uh, another winner, Mike McCarthy, because he showed Austin Powers a spy who shagged me in a meeting. What what a poll right there! I I just I love it. Uh, I mean, the fact that he classic got movie a bunch of twenty somethings. To be going around saying "Yeah, baby" in the year of our <laughs> Lord 2021, it, I mean, if you if you're not impressed by that kind of level of coaching up, I, I mean, that's Super Bowl level coaching right there. Yeah, I, I I would have immediately boosted him up to like the Bill Belichick level if he did gold member instead of a spy who shy people. But that's uh, that's that's, that's, that's nigh impossible. I don't even know the <laughs> you, you, you get bring up Tom Landry, he couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts from this episode of Hard Dogs before we sign off? You know, I guess the one thing, other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, it that first opening scene when Dak like retelling the story, even though we've heard it before, it just yeah. it it got me a lot. Chills, like it, yeah. it, it just was like yeah. it was just again of hearing him retell it and talk about how tough it was, and uh, it, I'm just really excited. And, and I had this thought too, at the moment too, is that you know we we know Dak really well. We've been following his career, his whole NFL career. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that kind of only know him from the games a little bit that don't mm-hmm. know his personality. I'm really excited for the rest of the country and the world that doesn't know Dak. I mean, obviously he's one of the more high profile quarterbacks, but still, even so I'm excited for the rest of the country and the world to, to kind of get to know Dak a little bit. Cause he's just such a, a special dude. And um, it's going to be great to see everybody else kind of enjoy him as well. I, I agree. This is a big stage for for Dak after signing that contract. I think he's going to come off very well. I, th- I already think he came off well in the first episode. Absolutely. I just think he's very, very likable. He's very personable. Um, I, I think he's really the big winner uh, of the first episode of Hard Knocks, even though he got injured in that episode. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, no, it's not shocking at all, I guess, to, for Cowboy fans. So uh, mm-hmm. that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will try to do a reaction show after every single Hard Knocks episode. So we have, what, four more to go. That's uh, right. We'll, we'll try to post these late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. So make sure you guys are looking for uh, wherever you get your podcasts, on YouTube. Uh, we want to continue to have you guys subscribe, download the podcast. Uh, follow Lane in at McCoolBCB. You can follow the show at Lockdown Cowboys. And I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We will see you next time.